coming up in this week's show, we're going to be talking about this, the PSC. As you can see, I'm here at the Engineering Technology Group and I'm going to be finding out more about this special unit from the MD of Bloom Novatesh UK. Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. David, the portable spindle control, the PSE, just quickly tell us what it is, please. Yeah, it's, um, it's a service tool, so it's, it's a little bit of a new sort of product area for us, really. Obviously, people know us for uh, in-process probing systems, but this is a, a development of the laser digilog system, which is used as a service tool uh, for checking of the, the, the CNC spindle. So just how does that look? What are we trying to look at? Are we looking to predict a breakage, are we seeing the, the, you know, the spindles 10, 20, 50% worn? Yeah, exactly that. It's, the idea obviously for, for a, a production company, a, a machining company, if they suddenly find that the spindle starts to fail and then dies pretty quickly, then that's it, the machine stops, you've lost all your production. What this is, is a, a, a means of being able to annually or periodically, shall I say, inspect the spindle so you can see what the status is and we detect very early signs that the spindle is actually showing signs of being worn. So you can now um, plan into your production process to get some service activity done on the spindle and you don't lose production. And correct me if I'm wrong, it doesn't simply say it's good, it's bad, it's on its way out. It actually tells you what's wrong. Yeah, because of this is part of the Digilog family, so it's, it's got the analog measurement input. So we're not only just measuring a beam shaded or not, we, we're measuring how much it's been shaded. So we can now capture so much more data from the, from the rotating tool in the spindle, uh, in, in the laser, sorry. So we, from that information, we can start to look at actually to the, to the detail of which bearing is failing, whether it's the inner ring, the outer ring, the, the ball, the trace, that we can start getting a huge amount of data as to where the problem is within the spindle. That's fascinating to me. From a, from a tooling background, and I would often go into a machine shop and I would say your cutting tools are not up to scratch, but your surface finish isn't good enough, the tool life, the tool life isn't what it would be, and they'd use somebody else's and get exactly the same problems. And kind of the spindle was the last place to look almost. Yeah. So, if we'd have had this, this would have been perfect. You could you could have inspected the spindle. It's almost currently it's the last place we look, whereas really it should be the first place you look. Yeah, yeah. It, the problem you have, of course, is when you're having these issues, like you say, there are so many variables there that we need to look at. So, what, what can it be? Can it be our tooling? Is it our holders? Is it the machine itself, the spindle? We can quantify different things quite easily, but the spindle is extremely costly and extremely uh, difficult to, to replace and exchange really, whereas this allows you to very quickly uh, determine the status of the spindle at the moment. And, and what, what are um, Bloom Novatest suggesting? Are you suggesting an engineer would buy this and keep it away in, in their stores or do you think, uh, we're here today, the engineering technology group, is it, should they have one to do it for engineers behalf or maybe a combination of the two? Yeah, I think a combination of the two really. I, I, I think the first thing we kind of thought of this new product was uh, for, for these sort of guys, engineering technology group, where they, they're PDIing their machines before they're sent to customers, so they can create a, a data reference of the status of the spindle before it leaves, and then they can periodically check the spindle and see how it compares to, to, to brand new on day one. Mm -hmm. um, but also for, for end users in the field, really, to, who have many machines on the shop floor, that they can do a, an annual inspection as part of the service inspection or, or even sooner than that if needed, that they can quickly evaluate early if the spindle is showing signs that it needs some service activity. So David, it's worth pointing out we've got two lasers on, the, on here. We wouldn't normally have that, would we? No, no. So the system we're talking about is a portable um, spindle control. It's actually built around our uh, tool setting system called the LC50 Digilog. Now, if a customer has a machine that, or, that is already fitted with the LC50 Digilog, then he has, by simply buying a machine, a software license, he has the ability to do the spindle check with the existing laser system. The portable version is for customers who don't already have the laser on the machine. So what we've shown, this machine, we have installed the laser permanently at the back there, but we just put the, the portable version on just to show the people you know, what, what can be done when there isn't a laser on there. And it's just very quickly fixed to the table on, on magnetic blocks. 
Yeah, and what we've just seen prior to this is obviously the, the, the guys fitting this, and it took, I, I would guess, less than five minutes. It takes no time to set whatsoever. But can you talk us through what, what we've just seen in terms of the, the, the inspection on the, on the computer? Yeah, yeah, so, the, so basically we install it on the table, just with the magnetic blocks, as I say. The, all the cables run through and connect through the interface to, to the software. Um, in terms of the machine, all we do is we use a precision calibration reference tool which normally comes with a, with a machine anyway. Um, we put it into the laser beam, and then we run the spindle through a series of speeds. So starting at 1,000, in this example we've just run, we did 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. And at each time, the software does a check of the harmonics, of the vibration, and the stability, so the thermal expansion, at each RPM range of the spindle. So you've mentioned the harmonics a couple of the times, and this is a, this is something in cutting tools. It's a killer. The tools uh, shaken about. Yeah. You know, it, it makes your machine far less productive. I'm interested to learn more how about I get how you measure harmonics, but how can you work out what's wrong with the spindle purely from the harmonics? Yeah. Well, so the the spindle obviously there are different harmonic ranges from each bearing set, and then each bearing set within that will have will will see vibration in the different frequency ranges. So we can instantly tell you if, if which bearing is, is, is causing the problem, whether it's the front one, it's, it's the back one. But not only that, we can also tell you if it's you know, the inner ring, the outer ring, the balls, or the trace itself, the cage. So by measuring each individual harmonic range, we can pinpoint quite accurately where, which bearing is the problem and which part of the bearing is causing you the, the problem. Mm -hmm. it, it, in bearings, the, which whether, we need to know whether the outer ring or the inner ring is going because spindles tend to last longer if the outer ring is, is causing the problem. Their life will be a little bit longer. Still a problem, still we've got to address it, but it gives us some idea of how much lifetime mm -hmm. we've got left on the spindle before we need to do a service. It's a good point. Many end users now, they're looking to do PPM, you know, planned preventative maintenance. Yeah. And I guess if you know your spindle's on the way out and it needs addressing and Maybe it's November, maybe it's October, and you, it, I can last all Christmas, but I yep. don't want to wait till January and have a failure. So let's get it out over the Christmas break, get it re uh, re replaced or, or fixed. Yep. And yeah, let's, let's hit January, the ground running. You know, you, you can predict the maintenance requirements. Exactly that. It's, the, the problem you have at the moment is, is with no knowledge of what's going on on your spindle, that um, if the spindle has suffered some damage, sometimes you can have a crash. Um, and everything looks like it's okay, so you carry on producing, but in fact you have caused some internal damage within the spindle itself, but you have no knowledge of that until that damage could be, comes to a point where the spindle actually fails. Then that's it, you've now stopped, you've stopped production, you've got a machine that's effectively doing nothing, it's sitting there. Mm -hmm. So w what we're trying to do is identify very early uh, that you have got some issues that need addressing, where those issues need to are, are within the spindle, uh, and then you can, the, the customer can then schedule with his, his production at the best time to, to stop the machine and do that service work. Yeah, more and more companies are having, in this case, the engineering technology group, they've got a, a good reputation for service and support and maintenance of their machine tools. So end users are getting these guys in on an annual basis. I guess the spindle, there's not a lot you can do because they're working blind, aren't they? Yeah. So if this was implemented into an annual service, um, it's almost like an MOT for a spindle, isn't it? Exactly that, exactly that. It, it, not only does it help the, the end user with, with regards to their uh, production planning of the machine, it also helps the service agents, you know, the ETG service guys, um, because they know well ahead of themselves which machines they've got to do some service work on, so they can also put it in their program a lot easier to, to, to accommodate all the service activity. So for the engineers watching at home, how are they going to learn more about this? Clearly. It, it look it, it sounds particularly difficult. It's not. I'm, I'm a, seeing them install this. It's incredibly straightforward. So, yep. how do people find out more? Both, you know, from an existing user's perspective, people who've already got the lasers, to uh, to new users. Well, certainly, if they've, I mean, the, the contacts Bloom UK. Um, we're here to to sort of promote the product and to educate the customers in using the system. If they've already got um, a laser system on their machine tool then basically it's a license, so they can contact us, we can uh, switch on the license for them, at a price of course, um, and then give them training on how to use it. Um, for the portable system, um, we can take it anywhere on any machine, it doesn't matter the control, 
the type of machine and we can demo the system for, for the customer. So any end users that have several machine tools on the shop floor, um, it could be a really useful tool and we can go in, do a full demo and they can see exactly what their status of their machines are at this moment and, mm -hmm. and, and where they are with their spindles. And finally, if they don't want to invest in it, is, is it a service you offer, you know, could, will Bloom Nova Test go in and do it for, on behalf of the end user? It, I think yes is the answer to that really. When we first introduced it as a new product, the idea was to sell it as a product. We've been talking to quite a few uh, end users, we've introduced it to the machine dealers, but we've talk, spoken to end users and the one thing that's come in quite clear is that they would like it as a service. Um, so now we have to kind of rethink our strategy a little bit as to uh, do we actually use the system to offer a spindle check service for the customer. So that's definitely under our consideration at the moment, yeah.